Hi, all. I'm Dan Smakerod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Friday, April 20th, 2018, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. Uh, super excited. Our, our guest today, Metroplex 360, Chris Hickman. Hey, Chris, good to see you again. Hi, Dan. Hey, Chris. Um, uh, Chris Hickman, he's going to do show and tell on the Leica BLK 360 uh, mashed up with Matterport. I, and I think, Chris, we should just take a moment and just talk a little bit about you because like, you are a rock star in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, you are the uh, uh, an, an amazing photographer in your own right. You shoot Matterport. You have Matterport. Uh, you have uh, a team that shoots for you. You have multiple Matterport cameras. Uh, you're, um, you've, you create these amazing, um, uh, uh, apps, uh, right now, the, uh, w, I want to say the short code, uh, WP, help me out here. Uh, WP short code for Matterport, which is word, WordPress short code for Matterport. Awesome free tool that you've created mm -hmm. for the community. Um, and, uh, uh pro prolific writer in the, we get around network forum, uh, often have a, a lot to share, always interesting, super helpful. And uh, we really, we, we appreciate you so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, the interesting thing, uh, if, if you look in Chris's background, he actually has this amazing, clean, super clean office, but he wanted us to feel like the rest of us. So he green screened in a little bit of clutter in the background, just so we'd all feel comfortable. Is that right? I did. Chris? That's, that's right. And I threw some of my favorite things around the room. Yeah. So that's totally green screen behind Chris. Uh, otherwise, you'd just be seeing this fantastic view from his office That's right. with it's everything. All Photoshop. There's a Photoshop <laughs> box back there and a tripod. It's great. All right, great. So, uh, super excited. You you have a BL uh, a Leica uh, Geo Systems BLK. I can't believe it either. <laughs> and and <laughs> you and, and Matterport is in the midst of uh, a public beta uh, Matterport plus uh, Leica. Uh, BLK 360. Tell us everything. Don't stop. Go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so Matterport's been doing a limited field test and the field test is limited to people who own a Leica Black 360. This is an expensive camera and it is the first of its kind. Like Matterport was the first of its kind, a consumer device that could do 3D space capture. This is the first prosumer device that can do LiDAR um, capture of large spaces that's uh i think it's it's pitched towards industrial it's pitched towards um architects it's pitched towards professionals that need to do these highly detailed point clouds and what's amazing is that i think matterport saw the price tag has come down to where we think some of our pros and we uh, can use this technology and maybe some of those architects those engineers will also want to use our technology so it's bringing the Matterport into a new phase um, with high-end professional tools. It's really exciting. Uh, pretty crazy. So you have a, a camera that I want to say costs nearly twenty thousand dollars. How about showing it to us? I, uh, I know we've done a number of episodes on the the Leica BLK three hundred and sixty, but uh, let's let's just make sure you actually have one of these babies. <laughs> let's take a look. Yes, and to be very clear, Dan, I don't want anyone to think that I purchased this. Um, we have a bunch of amazing field testers who have been testing things out, going back to the Pro Two when that came out, and. Uh, we have a field tester who was testing with the black and who felt like it would be in good hands with me for a short period of time so that I could continue testing. So this is the gig bag that uh, like a cell. I'm trying okay. to see there's a logo somewhere. It's very small. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. All <laughs> right. We're, we're doing so, an unboxing, an unboxing. Kind of video. Are. I mean, what's, <laughs> what's in the box? What's in the box? That look how small it is look how small that is isn't that amazing i know right this tiny little thing it uh it's this little canister and you give it a turn you give it a really good turn hold on okay so we're looking at the case that holds the blk yes yeah it's uh right here the handle comes down that actually okay. fits into the sides so there's a notch yeah and you open it up and be careful because we don't want you to drop that baby especially because it's not yours no because <laughs> at this point after taking that off it just releases yeah 
And you've got this proprietary, this is where it mounts in the tripod. Yeah. That's not like a lens. It kind of looks like you'd think it was a lens. It's not. Um, it's a circular thing it clips in. And I'll show you guys that in a minute. The Leica logo, a simple one button. Turn back here. This is where all the fun happens. And a little place the battery pops in and out. Cool. And so removable battery. Yeah. Which uh, just to let you know, what I found is that these do about 30 scans. It's, um, I experienced at this, the quality levels that I was scanning at about 5% battery drop sometimes per scan. It was mm -hmm. wild. But if you come armed with enough batteries, that's not really a big issue since the batteries do charge quick, uh, relatively fast. I think that if you have three, you can keep cycling forever as long as you keep charging one of them. Cool. That sounds, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. And then I put that back because... I might drop it. And there we go. <laughs> Sorry, it's it really is quite amazing when you get this thing in your hands because for such a large investment and such a, a big endeavor you're taking on, the thing is shockingly small. Well, I think what's what's particularly interesting when you say shockingly small, it's um, uh, not that many years ago what that scanner could do was was probably 40 or 50 pounds so uh, and, I mean, and much bigger so. it's it's smaller than my ipad yeah and dan if you don't mind this gives me an idea would you mind if i uh compare it to a matterport camera yeah, uh, sounds great i'm gonna yep. take my headphones off for just a second i'm gonna go open my case and get that out okay and uh hey leon i i see you in the the virtual studio audience so if you don't mind i'm going to keep you there until we get to questions and answers at the at the end if you don't mind then anyone else that's tuning in if you're at wgan uh hyphen tv.com that's the or we get around network forum.com uh there's a little button there it says join the virtual studio audience if you'd like to uh, join in and ask some questions of chris um uh, uh feel free to join in the show i know uh Leon, Leon and I uh, talked uh, last week uh, some about the, the test, and I'm sure Leon's going to have some questions for, for Chris as well. So um, uh, Matterport versus Leica BLK 360. I think you like calling it black. Is that the uh, uh, BLK? Black is the new BLK? I think you, you actually brought up a good point. I watched a few of Leica's presentations, and they do call it BLK. Um, I call it black because what is BLK? Did, I don't know what BLK stands for, Dan. Do you know what that stands for? Sounds like it stands for black. And, and that's what I thought too. So without without listening to any kind of sales pitches before using this, and only with the with reading the word, I just called it like a black. It sounded good. All right, but we'll 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 go with like a black because you're the rock star. Maybe it's block. The BLK. This. Let me tell you, if it's BLK, it sounds like a block. This does weigh like as much as like a brick. It's very heavy, and uh, which is good for tripod stabilization. Okay, be be careful with that because we 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 know you need to return that. Yes, I do. In in one piece as well. It, yes. Would you like to see the other thing that came in this package? I'd, I'd love to see everything that came with. It. And incidentally, Chris has shot with it this week. It's not just sh you know show and tell of the oh, pieces yes. and the stuff. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Chris has uh, used the Leica BLK. And uh, we're going to have some uh, some models to look at of Chris, yes. but see, we're, I think Chris wants to tease us all first with uh, this is just being the silly. stuff, the stuff I mean, that he got. The one thing is that I don't want to like be do a spoiler because I think it's almost fun to get this to unbox it and be like, no, no, what? come on, Let, let's see what you got. Okay, Dan, what does this look like to you? Um, that looks like a piece to some bagpipes. It does, doesn't it? You could. This looks like a musical instrument. Musical what, instrument. I what? suspect it's a tripod. I know, right? Because why would they send a musical instrument with it like a <laughs> BLK? You, it's this strange thing. If you can tell what I'm doing, you click these little things yeah. around, and then it comes open. And this is very strange. And then yeah. you twist really hard, and it extends. And yes, you do have a tripod. It's and funny. I think I would have just been happy with having a head to attach to, to a normal professional tripod and call it a day. <laughs> Yes, and I would love to discuss that too. Um, upon unboxing this, which was the night before I needed to use it mm -hmm. for the first shoot that I did, I set everything up and I put the Leica BLK on it, and I discovered that it was at uh, it was very low, it was extremely low, 
And I experimented a little bit with um, pushing the legs in a bit, but it wasn't very sturdy when I did that. And I came up with the idea that since this is the only tripod I have for it, that I would need to use bed risers in order to have the tripod at an acceptable height the next day. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. No, I had this on a set of bed risers the entire time. Oh, oh my gosh. So here it is. This, is a, this has the middle column that you twist into place and it's rather diminutive, in fact. Scale of one to 10, 10 being you absolutely love this tripod. Um, I'm gonna give it a three. Three. And it's gonna be three based upon how unique. It looks like they had they did a partnership with IKEA. It is very unique. <laughs> Seriously, it it um the fact that it folds down tiny and ships flat is incredible. Like it it's yeah. it is tiny. Yeah, but you could you could take it with you on an airplane and uh, not be could. conspicuous. Yeah. Absolutely. And you could but, but how, how why are we missing seven points? Because Maybe if I was just doing point cloud scanning of an industrial space, this would be acceptable. But yeah. if I care one bit about the photography that's coming out of this, um, and I'm using it for more than just a reference material, I'm going to be very upset by how low the tripod is. And huh. I'd love to show you just quickly. that. Yeah. Um, is that it? Is that how high it goes? Is that not high enough for you, Dan? Is that it? Yes, it is. You're kidding me. No, there's no extension here whatsoever. I can, you have no option to make it higher? I already did make it higher. This is, you can make it lower. I can make it much lower if you'd like. You, <laughs> meaning you had it on the on the bed risers right now? No, it's not in the bed risers. I actually don't have those in the room. Um, yeah. I want to You're just talking about blocks you put underneath the sofa in order to pop it up. Yes. Yeah, with a I little- took those, I took little, those with A me. little rim so that it's not going to slide off the block. Yeah. That's oh, exactly that sounds frightening. <laughs> I'm not, we're it, not going to tell the person that you borrowed this camera from it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they know. I've shown pictures. In fact, they, they, they called them booties before, work boots and all this. Oh my I managed God. to rise it up by an extra um, maybe eight inches. Oh my and then gosh. at that point, it was just a little bit lower than I would like to use a Matterport for yeah. in the circumstances that I used it. Yeah. Okay. So here this, by the way. This is the um, Leica Tri 100 tripod. And yeah. it's right there. And you can't even see the top is right here. Correct. Yeah. All and right. It, so uh, so we get it. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to visit with the Leica people to ask them that question is, I just, I just could imagine they wanted it low so that it didn't get toppled over. That's possible. And I will tell you this much. I do like the design. That's why I gave it three points. But as far as use, if you're using it because of the fact that you equally value the photographic capture yeah. and the point cloud mesh capture, you're not going to want it this low. You're going to want to use something else like the Leica Tri 100 or the Manfrotto mm -hmm. or something like that with a tripod adapter. And they sell a proprietary adapter because this right here, and you know, anyone who looks up online will understand they see this. This is the adapter that the Leica mounts on. It's a circular little thing with these little buttons on the side. You yeah. push it, you stick the tri the camera on, and then you let go and it's on, right? Does, does someone sell a, 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 an adapter? To, like to, I do. Like I do sell an adapter. To go to go from th that thingamajig to a professional grade tripod. Exactly. And so for that reason, hmm. I bought a Leica tripod <laughs> um, just so I would look the part so that the next time I go out, I don't have to deal with bed risers and broomsticks anymore. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. Now, one thing I do I do wonder though is this center column, as you see, it's got a little thing that's that screws in and allows this. They say on the website that you can go upside down if you want to by just flipping and reversing this. Yes. Which uh, that's I neat. don't think so. But I what I wonder though is if there's an easy solution for extending this to get a pole extender that would work with this so that you could use the kit tripod and you could go out uh, there and I, feel I'm like just worried about them. center of gravity and having the thing topple. There's also no level on this. Yeah, that doesn't bother me so much. I well, I, that's interesting because I I mean I would normally put a a ten dollar level on top of it anyway to to check. Um, right. However, you this, this where are you gonna put that? 
I mean, it's, it's a good it, question. Yeah, no, I mean, I would normally put it on the top of the, but there, there's not really a play on the Matterport. It it just, it just lends itself, you know, it's got oh, a shelf on top. You can put, yeah, you can put a drink on the Matterport and it's fine. You know, <laughs> just put your drink there, scan. With fast capture though, my drinks usually fall off. That's uh, <laughs> that's been a problem. So, okay, I guess that's enough unboxing. You can see me wrestling with this. Yeah, I uh, got it. This, this is a beautiful domed little thing that uh, is underwhelming in its appearance. Let me take it back. It's beautiful. It looks well-made. It is solid. There are no plastic parts. It's very impressive, but it's diminutive. For so much power coming out of this, for what it is, it is shocking in its uh, beautiful, tiny design. Yeah. Well, we've we've done a show on uh, spec. So for, for any of you that have not seen that show, uh, if you go to WGAN TV hyphen, the WGAN hyphen TV.com, that's WGAN-TV.com. Uh, just look for the tag um, uh, BLK360, and you can find all the, the videos and discussions on this topic uh, in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, so we won't spend you know too much time talking about the, the specs of the camera. Yes. Uh, su suffice to say, it's doing two things as photography, what we think of spherical photography, capture, and... Um, um, uh, creating um, uh, a point cloud, mm -hmm. uh, putting out 360,000 dots points per second, point, per, points per second in yes. order to create a, a quite dense mesh. And uh, unlike Matterport, it can do it outside in daylight, mm -hmm. uh, um, among other things. And and I noticed on some of your scans, do you, do you want to jump into a scan or do you want to talk a little bit more about how you felt it was different than than the Matterport camera. I think we could do this, the two at the same time, Dan, because I'm sure okay. anyone who's patiently watching wants to probably see. Well, let's see it already. Something. Let's, well, let, let's see it. Is that, is that, is that, is that what I'm hearing? Let's, well, let's, let's yeah. go to, let's go to the videotape. I've got uh, a rooftop that I shot, which was the first one I did. So, and I think that the rooftop would be a good introduction. This was my, yeah. Let me see if I can call that one up here. I know I got a lot of tabs open. <sighs> is uh the rooftop one okay yes you see that on your screen now absolutely okay. and you'll see i've actually annotated annotated a little bit i had a window of time at a property that i was doing work at the day and i knew that i i was hoping to get the entire thing done and to really just field test to see what it is i should expect if i was uh going somewhere with the full intention of scanning so you'll see I've marked here using mat, uh, labels in Matterport uh, Showcase uh, one through seven of the different Leica scan locations that I did. And I wrote down here two to be helpful um, what the quality settings were that I used. And we'll go into that in a bit. Okay, um, that's cool. I, I mean, I, I noticed when I looked at this earlier, Chris, mm -hmm. um, uh, not, not that one. I was uh, uh, That was pretty cool. Almost yes. 32 feet between scan six and seven. That was nice of you to do the measurement because yes. as, as Matterport photographers, we're used to maybe six to 10 feet. Don't go past mm -hmm. 10 feet. Or it's, uh, it's just gonna, it's, it's gonna fail to align. It's gonna fail to align. And mm -hmm. here here you were able to go. Uh, do you know that it uh, aligns? Is there, is it, is it uh, do you wanna go through that process of capture and talk about that? Do you want me to fly into the model and just walk around it? What's your preference? You can, you can hit the play button if you'd like. I kind of set this up. Uh, uh, okay, let's do that. I'll go back to the play button. Yeah, and I'll talk a little bit. Um, on, this, on this tour, you see a long vertical area to the right. What I did is I scanned everything I could with the Pro 2 camera in a shaded area, and then I began adding the black scans to it. I'd actually already been here in the, uh, previously, so I didn't bother scanning too much the interior area. Um, this is an outdoor six, uh, six story high rooftop overlooking downtown Dallas. Um, it's one of the nicer apartment communities that you could hope to live in if you were living in Dallas. Um, I've been to this location about a year ago and it just really killed me that this couldn't be captured as a 3D space. It's a very sunny space. And uh, on this particular day, it was quite a windy space also. And while I was upset about that, because I thought this is surely gonna mess up with, with perhaps the point cloud capture or the image quality, I was also very happy to have those bad conditions to see how successful I would be. And uh, if you don't mind, let's, uh, would you like to take control and kind of walk through this space a bit? 
You can tell me what you see. We have a little bit of an issue here, Dan, and that is- I, the... I tried to cross in there and I couldn't do that, but I think mm -hmm. I can see on this mini map. Yes. And in, incidentally, um, this mini map is new to me. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. <laughs> do you want to talk about it now or do you, want to, do you want to kind of finish the tour and do it as a segue? We, we, we can do a tour. You know, I was trying to, to walk over here and I yes. was actually having trouble. Uh... Let's talk about that. I made the false assumption that as this is a gate, that is primarily see-through with small, you know, metal beams, that if I scanned on the other side, I'd be able to easily pass through. And I felt fairly sure that would happen. Um, I felt sure just based upon the, all my experience doing Matterport scans that I'd easily be able to just allow people to walk through. And that in turn was not true. It, it registers as a wall and I can't go through it. That's interesting, so that's isn't why. it? Yes. Um, I intend to return on location, not only to finish this, but also to replace that scan with that fence open. So I, I, I think for uh, all of us that are shooting with Matterport, um, certainly the, the first thing that's impressive to me is this was shot outdoors on a sunny day, uh, which would not have been possible uh, You'll notice with, there's no with Matterport. There's no uh, ref, uh, tripod shadow because this was shot in the middle of the day. The shadow was almost completely concealed uh, between the legs of the tripod. The sun was directly overhead. It was the brightest point of the day. Was that by choice or just by uh, luck of the draw? You have no tripod. Uh... Luck of the draw. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thrilled about that because it occurred to me later how, and you're in a Pro 2 scan right now. You've, you've walked over into one. Um, it occurred to me later how much of, an, of a difference this uh, scan would have been if you'd seen this giant, uh, you know, tripod shadow cast across the ground or diminutive little weird pipe organ <laughs> tripod as it may be. Um, so again, this is a windy day. Everything you're seeing here, if it were in motion, it would be like shaking in the wind. And um, I think that the black, the BLK did a pretty darn good job of, um, capturing data despite this. Um, did, did you have any issues with things being fuzzy or um, because of the way the BLK, uh, the black 360 is, is capturing, um, I, I think it's capturing more images around than Matterport. I think it's about 12 inches, 12 images around. Yeah, or? I think it's making about that many stops. Um, the camera itself on the on the BLK is a really small fine point it's it's not a very big sensor from the looks of it um, I've not had a chance to really do too much research I'm the kind of person I go out and I use something and then all these questions pop up and then I research later and I'm kind of in that phase right now of wanting answers mm -hmm. but um, it seemed that during the photo capture cycle that it does it made lots of small stops and it took quite a long time to do just the photo the photography Whereas when it does the 3D capture, you know it does the 3D capture because there's a visual mirror that's spinning really fast in the center. It's almost hypnotic to look at. Um, so I call I'm, it mode. yeah, I'm I'm kind of lost in the weeds here. I need I need the big picture. Am, am I, uh, so you you have two cameras on site. One yes, is Matterport. Sir. One's the the Black 360. Mm -hmm. um, you have one iPad on site. Yes, iPad you're, Pro. And you're using the iPad Pro. Uh, interchangeably with Matterport and the BLK 360. Yes. And, and that's completely seamless. I, I want to say, I haven't done this, but I want to say there's mm -hmm. an icon on the iPad that is that indicates you're shooting Matterport scan or you're shooting a BLK scan or you're shooting Matterport uh, 360 um, view. Yeah. It would be the same as if you had two Matterport cameras in the room and you swap between one and the other. You simply change what your Wi-Fi connection is on your iPad, and then it says connecting to camera. It might say a message like camera's warming up and then connected, and it says like a BLK. Uh, the one big difference is that with the BLK, you have two settings that are beneath the capture button. These settings are for image quality, which can be uh, it's measured in HDR modes and you'll notice I've yeah I see on this one I have highlighted BLK scan 2 it says HDR 4 medium mm -hmm. the medium is the uh, the density of the 3d scan and that's so you have a choice of three mm -hmm. 
Low, medium, and high. Okay, sounds like my crock pot. <laughs> it's about that simple, isn't it? <laughs> what I've been told is that um, medium is, and Matterport have documented this, that me when you capture it medium, you're going to get about the same quality level as you would effectively as using a Matterport camera. And uh, when we talk about quality, are we talking about the photography or are we talking about the data or both? We're talking about the 3D data, the mesh, that and perhaps the data that you would get if you were ordering a matter pack and exporting an OBJ in a point cloud. Okay, when, there's a lot that lot you just said in shorthand. I so I, I want to just make sure we're, we're we're bringing everyone along with us on this uh, this journey. So the, yeah. the 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 first thing is in terms of the photography. Correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. I think what I heard is regardless of whether the camera is set on low, medium, or high that the photography is the same. Correct. Okay. And that, that low density. and low, medium and high completely refers to the density of the mesh of the mm -hmm. point cloud. That's right. And then you were starting to talk about something that uh, that that we all can order for Matterport called yes. a matter, a matter a, pack. A matter yes. pack. Okay? And uh, what did you want to say about the matter pack? I wanted to note that, of course, if you're using the BLK, you are capturing 3D data, and that Matterport has stated that the medium density capture will capture in, will capture a quality of mesh that is comparable to the quality that the Matterport captures. Where this translates into the matter pack is that when we use Showcase, which is the player we're seeing here, you see the, a certain... The, the, the... That, so now I, I've you've lost me here, Chris, because I'm not used to a showcase beginning with mpedbed.com. Ah, mpedbed.com. So that, sure. I'm referring to this <laughs> right up here. Yes. Which, which uh, I don't know what that is. I just know that it's not something I'm used to seeing. This is my little pet project I've been working on, Dan. It's um. It's my Matterport SDK project. Uh -huh. and, uh, we look at that an uh, Easter egg. We just discovered an Easter egg. Well, I wanted to use it so you could get over that fence. <laughs> it's um, it's <laughs> in this case, and we'll talk about this on a different show so, or later. So, get yeah, bored. fantastic. Uh, so, uh, I just want for for clarification, if we were um, processing the model that had both uh, BLK three sixty scans and Matterport scans. When it comes back, it comes back exactly as a Matterport URL yeah. that I'm used to. Yes. And you have something else going on because you're, you're a like rock star developer, which mm -hmm. I, I don't mean that in, in any facetious way or sarcastic. I truly mean you are a rock star, and everyone who is uh, who has read anything in the We Get Around Network forum knows exactly what I'm talking about because you you've constantly innovated, come out with cool tools. I would like to come back to that, um, but at the moment, let's stay focused on um, the the intersection of of Matterport BLK yeah. in in uh, in the in the world that most of us operate before we get to your beta yes. new new tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so if so if I, so do I need to shoot on medium in order to have the mesh at equal or same quality as Matterport? Yes. That's what I heard. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then if I want to have the quality be better, and mm -hmm. does better translate to longer distance that it can see further? It's just no. the density of the mesh. It's the density of the mesh. Okay. And by doing that, one thing that anyone who has a BLK um, in their possession will realize is that by bumping up these settings any higher, you're adding minutes. Um, many, many minutes to each scan you do. do you, did you happen to, to benchmark it of how, how long it took to do a, a scan on low, medium, and high? I did HDR4 at high quality, and it took me about 10 minutes to oh, do one scan. You, you've lost me again. I'm sorry, Chris. So it sounds like my, this, is, this is harder than my crock pot because there's apparently low, medium, and high mm -hmm. on HDR low, medium, and high. Is that yeah, right? So that right. sounds like nine different permutations. If you multiply the two together and come up with all the different uh, possibilities, yes. So, so that would be HDR 
low, medium, and high, I could have HDR low, and I could have scan density on low, medium, or high, and so forth. So I, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's probably the only thing I remember from my, uh, my class on probability and combinations and permutations, whatever that is. So well, I wish I could share the really high quality one I did with the settings boosted up. It was actually to the left of, of where your cursor is, but then um, something happened and it crashed out and I just sat there and said, well, I'm not doing that again. Cause it took, it took, well, that's learning. <laughs> I mean, like 12 minutes. yeah. Okay. But that, I mean, to me, that's huge. You, 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 you got to bring us along here. So yeah. if there are nine different, possibilities and you set it on shoot the best hdr photography yeah. possible and shoot the densest dense the most dense mesh possible then um it, it can take as long as 10 to 12 minutes 10 to 12 minutes yeah. scan okay so which i've heard in the aec world people have discussed about how at that highest quality level it's remarkably fast based um, on their experience with other devices that uh, came before this and how this is amazing that you captured yeah. this much clarity in that speed yeah you know i, I just kind of kind of give everybody perspective because i you know i've had the benefit of going to spar 3d uh, expo and conference i was there last year it was in houston in 2017 um, I'm going again in, uh, I want to say June of this year, uh, it'll be in, uh, uh, I want to say I could be wrong. Anaheim. I might have my cities wrong. Got like four different trade shows I'm going to, uh, but the, the, the I guess the, the point I wanted to make is that for a camera, I think that was listed at that time is maybe either 15,000 or 18,500 with software. I want to say under 20,000 mm -hmm. and. Um, I want to say most of the people, the reaction was, wow, how could you get the price down so much? They're used to buying things at 40,000, 60,000, oh, yeah. 100,000, 200,000, and, and they're big. So just to, because, you know, we're, we're in our Matterport world and we're thinking, oh my gosh, $4,500, $3,500, yeah. $3,000, <clears> that's a lot of money. And now you're asking me to spend under twenty thousand dollars to to add yeah. something else. So uh, depending on which world you come from, uh, this is either either a incredibly inexpensive camera or a camera scanner or an incredibly expensive camera scanner. So it, it's it's very yeah. interesting. So I think at some point we'll get to use case. And I think you know if you have the right use case, then the the, the money frankly will be de minimis. It'll just be a cost of doing business. Exactly. Um, but we're not up to that part yet. We're still on kind of the show and tell and what you learned. <clears throat> so I've, you really I've done you, some research too. Mm -hmm. I've I've called a couple of places and there's some other people who've been interested in this and they've done their own research. And it seems the going market rate as of today is about $250 per day to rent a Leica BLK. And some places uh, they have a minimum of two days rental. So that provides a really easy way. If you've got a gig, you've put something and you hope to scan it, then yeah, you know, $500 overhead's not bad if you're getting a unique contract that can only be done with a combination of Matterport and the BLK. Yeah, right? I, I think that's a great point because, uh, you know, there's there's really, th you know, three options for, for, for getting one of these cameras. One is you buy it outright. Two, mm -hmm. you have a friend who lends it to you. Or three, that, that, <laughs> that you actually can rent these cameras and the, and you can uh, camera scanner. You can do that worldwide. Uh, if you and, and again, if you go to the We Get Around Network forum, that's We Get. If you're watching on YouTube, We Get Around Network Forum dot com, and you search for either BLK three sixty or uh, search for the tag uh, rental, you'll you'll find a discussion with where we've listed uh, three or four companies that. Uh, that list uh, that rent the the BLK. So I, I, I think Chris, thank you for doing the research. And I think that's a great point is to say, you, you know, you, you don't have to be all in, you could literally get a project. And, you know, if you're, if you're getting a couple thousand dollars or 5,000 or whatever it is to do a project, then renting, renting this thing uh, makes, sense. makes sense. And, and so I think, I think probably, you know, most of our, our viewers, let's let's say Matterport service providers, ears probably just perked up on that. So the question is, okay, 
if I rent it, how hard is the learning curve to get up to speed? Exactly. Exactly. And Dan, really, you're seeing the first of two scans I've done so far. And what I've decided to do, since I'm so lucky to have someone who trusted me to borrow their unit and um, who gave so greatly, what I wanted to do is to do some scans, share them with the community, and encourage them to use what I've done to pitch jobs and to discuss openly, this is my experience, this is where I made a mistake, this is the mistake I made, this is the thing I learned. I want them to be at a kind of shortcut um, to where they get the unit, they feel confident about using it, and they go out and they get some work done, they make some money, they succeed faster, um, and they don't feel any kind of just trepidation about doing it. Because really, you don't need to feel trepidation about using this when Matterport do release this. And I do want to do a notice. This is a field test. This is an open beta you do need to, you cannot do this today with the current version of Capture that is in the App Store. You do need Matterport to give you access. And they've been pretty gracious about giving access to people who own the BLK for obvious reasons. There's not a lot of them and buying a unit this expensive, I mean, you're in a very small pool of testers. But I imagine as people start to want to rent these, Matterport will receive a lot more requests to participate in the beta. And I don't actually know what to expect as to how they would handle that. Well, let, let me clear that up because today is Friday, April 20th, 2018, mm -hmm. SPAR 3D Expo in conference. I want to say, forgive me, I'm going to get my dates wrong. It's like June 3rd through 7th, I believe. That's soon. 2018. Really uh, you know, I, I'll predict here, I probably have already predicted it in the forum and I've forgotten, but I, I predict that at SPAR 3D uh, Expo and Conference, Matterport will want to and will announce that um, as of today, June 3rd, 4th or 5th, whatever it is at the conference, that um, it's no longer in beta. Uh, I, I absolutely firmly believe that they are racing to get done so that at at that marquee conference, this is the conference for, for high-end scanners that they want to be able to say, um, uh, uh, Matt Matterport, uh, I guess, let's kind of just put it all together, is that that, that Matterport and the Leica, the uh, Leica Geo Systems BLK360 and, 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 and uh, I, gee, I'm, I'm trying to remember if Matt, well, yeah, I, actually, Matterport announced the, the partnership uh, with Hexagon mm -hmm. um, in September of 2017. Hexagon is a publicly traded company. It, it owns uh, Leica Geosystems. So uh, seven months, they made an announcement. We're now in April, uh, I, I want to say March and April, doing beta testing. Clearly, in my mind, uh, Matterport, Hexagon, like a BLK 360, they all want to have uh, a booth and somebody speaking that says, you can get this solution today. Our salespeople are over there. Uh, go right up and order. Totally, in my mind, they will not, Matterport will not be in a beta come June 3rd. So, I, I hope you're right, Dan. I mean, that's a perfect time. It's a, that would be a good thing for everyone. Conferences, expos, every, every company is is in in my opinion is driven by conferences oh, and yeah. and and so you know we're, we're probably have some marketing people from matterport and uh technology people from matterport and they'll probably go yeah yeah we're not getting any sleep we're working on the weekends the bosses said you know you know uh, they really do that dan they really you, you, that's not even a joke that is actually the culture with these development people at matterport with the product managers and everything they are passionately working on these things around the clock even though we think they're not and some of us think that they don't care and everything they are like tormenting themselves when things yes. don't work right it's well if they're if they're bad. anything like one of the developers i work with i just bring a pair of handcuffs to the to the office and I, <laughs> and i just handcuff them to the chair it says you, you can't get up until you know we have our, our our next new amazing service to offer to uh we get around network uh, forum members. so all right but anyway uh squirrel i i, I completely I, com so I completely get it that the the engineers at Matterport super talented creating magic every day uh, that they uh, you know uh, the the question is well what have you done for us lately you know it's like too bad so sad that you've you've created all this 
previous magic, you must focus and get this delivered and absolutely done be because yeah. we're going to make an announcement. It's bar 3d that, uh, you know, for sale today and, and, uh, you know, go download the, the Matterport capture app and, uh, go to town oh, yeah. Clear clearly. Yeah. Yeah, I want. Hey, let's let's just do it. We're gonna predict that Matterport Capture 2.5 will be out before Spar or at Spar. They're gonna announce the. They're gonna announce it's available for everyone, and everything we know is gonna change. Yeah. Okay. Ish. So so that so that takes us back to the rental. That's I think that's yes. what sparked the conversation is mm -hmm. to say you know uh, uh, you know if you were thinking oh oh gosh I can't afford a twenty thousand dollar camera I don't even forgive me I don't remember the numbers I don't know because I've 18, seen eighteen thousand five hundred eighteen thousand five hundred I think at the show they announced it was going to be fifteen thousand I think today it's actually advertised it for was originally fifteen nine ninety five yeah and that was apparently I didn't realize that was the early bird price the early adopters price. And I was kind of playing around in my head thinking, you know, what could I sell? Um, I looked at my children for a moment and <laughs> uh, when they upped the price, which, I which, realized, which one of the five uh, didn't make the cut? Oh, it's easy. It's the youngest one. I've spent the less time with him. So it'd be the easiest. <laughs> Uh, okay, good. Uh -huh. Good. Good things. Our our families don't watch our shows. My, my wife doesn't watch our show. So, you know, it's <laughs> know, like two. I came up with That's logical. That's not personal. You know, I have the least invested with that <laughs> one. So. Uh, just, just like a programmer, very analytical, is very black and white, you know, okay. Uh, but then they upped the price. I looked at him again. I said, no, I couldn't get that much, you know. <laughs> Expensive. So 18500 going once, going twice. Uh, that That is the present list price on the uh, the Leica Geosystems yeah. website for the BLK. But so you're anyway. Not, you're not going to get out, though. You're not going to get out of, the, um, out of the Leica online store, though, for that price because – that gives you the, that's the base package with recap pro that gives you i'm looking right now on their site just to confirm um that gives you one battery <laughs> <laughs> i've gone through I, I went through two batteries on the next scan we're going to look at um yeah one and a uh, half batteries. but I, you know i just wanted to spend a moment on this this rental thing because this is so so important because i i, I want to say everyone in the we get around network forum uh, who has looked at the BLK 360 and there's been a lot of discussion for well over well over a year because yeah. I, I mean it goes back that far that this camera was announced I want to say everyone was drooling over it I think you know when the price came out it was, oh my heart my heart but the, yeah. the the point is uh the fact that you can rent one of these worldwide truly there's at least one company that will rent you one of these and anywhere on the planet that means um it just gets it just gets built into the cost of your job. It so does. you know, if it's a five thousand dollar job or a ten thousand dollar job or whatever it might be, um, it's just uh, part of the overhead. It's the it's the overhead yeah. of, of you know it's, it's it's cost of doing business. So that means everyone that is a Matterport service provider can actually be prepared yes. for the opportunity. And that's a whole different discussion on this mm -hmm. AEC space of architects, engineers, and construction. Uh, I know, you know, Chris has been kind enough to do a test, you know, outdoors and la de da, but that's not necessarily the, 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 the marketplace for, you know, they're not looking for a 3D tour model. There's other reasons. Realtors are not looking for it, this. Yeah. This is a completely no. different, completely different market. We, if you've we, got one, if you've got a BLK and you're working for a realtor, sure, you can go show off. That's great. But you're not going to rent one of these to do a realtor home unless that list price in that house is so high that you are just you want to differentiate yourself and you want to just I cannot imagine many people doing this. You you two estate. can do 12 minute scans that might fail. <laughs> Yeah, that's 12 minutes, the highest quality. You don't need to do that. We'll get back to that discussion. That's That was a very fast thing that I learned. So, um, and Dan, I, I want to mention, you were, talk, we were talking about the rentals. I believe you come from a background where you've worked in the media, you've worked with some kind of like with television production and things like that. And I've, I've actually worked in that world a tiny bit. I wasn't doing any of the production. I was off the side doing web development while they were doing TV. But I saw how it was common, very normal when you set up a shoot. So many of those people are hired hands for that day. So much that equipment was hired that day. It just does not make sense to purchase the equipment and to haul it everywhere. It's a very common thing. And we're not 
a lot of us are not used to that world yes. of renting your equipment for the job. Yeah, in fact, I've been to some uh, some studios in it in Atlanta, uh, where the surprisingly the photographer flies in from New York or L.A. and they're, they're renting a DSLR camera and they're renting the lighting and you Everything. know and and there's ten people that show up because somehow they don't do their own lighting so they have a lighting technician and now they're renting all the the the, the lighting so um there are many people that just you know just rent professionals that that, that yeah. rent what they need for the job and it just becomes part of the uh, you know, of that shoot but yeah and i think it helps so. maybe when you get that prolific and you do that much work in that world you get fatigued if you just continue doing everything yourself and so that's kind of how it becomes manageable yeah. So, so did get, you want you wanted to see another tour? scan? You wanted yeah, to get... yeah, yeah. So okay. that was my first one. That was a test. I discovered some quality settings. This next one, I did the entire thing, Dan, at medium density with HDR2 because okay. I felt very comfortable that those settings, they're right in the middle, that they would be perfect. Am I on the right one, pool and yeah, patio? You are. Yes, you are. Okay. So this is your second scan. Yes. Look at this. And what am I doing? Am I hitting play? Am I, what's happening? I you on know, I've, I'm not, I've not even had time to do a tour um, to build a highlight reel. Um, you're starting off in the patio and that patio is shaded. And I scanned that with the Pro 2 camera. Where, where are we? Where's patio? Uh, <laughs> let me go to a little floor plan view. Yes. Um, the patio. I, you is... know, this doesn't work like Matterport. I, I think, I think you're just like doing this. Uh, what do you call it? Um, some Easter egg sneaking in some of the Chris Hickman magic for touring. You know, I, I'm thinking, oh, this little map here, Matterport's coming out with that. No, that's Chris no. Hickman. That's, but that's this is Showcase 3 beta because some of these items are working off the SDK. The SDK is only available on Showcase 3. And they're just, they're almost ready to release Showcase 3. There's been some bugs. Wait, 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 wait. You're way ahead of me. This, I this know. Little, this little mini Crazy. map is this little mini map. Is you or yes. is okay? Yes. So, so for clarification, once again, Chris Hickman is the founder of Metroplex 360. In addition to being a awesome Matterport service <laughs> provider, he is also a killer developer, Ooh. particularly at the intersection of way cool meets Matterport and showing. You've been showing for years now. You've been showing us what's actually possible of what you can do with the Matterport technology way before Matterport even got there. But anyway, I, yeah. I, the point of that is, is this little map that I'm just taking for granted is a new feature that's part of uh, the BLK plus Matterport beta? No. This is this is this is a way cool. So we're, we'll ask Chris. I'll put that to the side. But just to know that I'm going. Well, of course, this is how you would navigate because this is this is how you would navigate. You you, you mean who are those guys? Who, you know, this, this, <laughs> I didn't even this. notice those guys. Who walked to my scan? <laughs> you had a couple construction guys. I forgot I where they where they were. I saw them earlier. <laughs> they, they they photo bombed you. They sure did. It's really easy to photo bomb a four minute scan. So, you know, I, I, I know the purpose of today's discussion is really to, to say first impressions of BLK 360 plus Matterport. And I'm distracted here because I'm going, wow, this is a way cool thing. You got we this. A, we need to have a chat about this. That's a whole nother topic. So we'll we'll come yeah. we'll 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 go back to, to that but topic. I don't recall this though. You know, I'm yes. looking at the it's view showcase for showcase three. We all use Matterport Showcase version 2.0. Yeah. Version 3.0 has been has been tested for a while. It's now in public beta. They started rolling it out to where some everyday Matterport service providers noticed their tours were displaying with a floor plan button again. And um, they took it away because there were some compatibility issues. Uh, this makes yeah. so much sense. It's a toggle between, okay, I'm in floor plan view. Great. I want to go to dollhouse view. You know, like, yeah. okay, okay. I won't go there. I just, it's just... really cool. Okay. But the, the, the fact that we're using the, 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 uh, the black 360 to scan this still doesn't mean that the pool where the water is is going to come out blue, unfortunately. I know. I know. Imagine my disappointment yeah. there that uh, you got this giant hole. Yeah. So for, forgive me, Chris. I didn't let you do the big picture here. Uh, maybe with the mini map, 
do you want to explain what yeah. we're looking at in terms of, let's see, what would the question be? In in terms of what's Matterport and what's BLK360? Yeah. And that mini map is really, it, I don't know if I can code it yet to show a different color dot, but um, for this example, it's very easy. Yes, that you can. Circle. Yes, you can. I, I'll try. You can um, do anything. I mean, you, you create magic all the time. I try. Um, yeah. The circles around the pool, the one big circle, I did a lap of the pool with the black and I did one little extra one to kind of experiment, uh, one that's a little bit higher than everything else to kind of experiment to see how that would affect the mesh. So that's all those are black. The rest of them, oh, and there's a, there's a couple in the lower left too, if you wanna highlight over those. Down, down further, right there and to the left of it. Yeah, those ones are black too. So there's actually some interesting details you can see um as far as the range goes like yes this one was done with the blk because it was an area that was um the Matterport camera got lost at and then this Boom. is pro too so you're you're underneath uh this you, the sun can't see the camera and so you were able to use Matterport. yes uh these look like a pretty dense amount of uh, scanning here and I know, what's, right? what was going on there that's actually normal. Um, yeah. If you were to, if this was a normal Matterport space, that mini map, they'd probably be spread out a bit more, but because of how large this space is, you know, the map is denser with points. And uh, we actually, another team member on my team, um, just the day before this scanned this entire interior space. And so I came back and I did a separate scan of just part of it. Um, we're going to be hopefully working with Matterport to merge the two separate models together mm, if okay. they do believe that this is a really fun use case. It's kind of trading that off. If this is a good use case for your integrate, look at those guys. <laughs> this, I'm, you know what? It, I, I know why. I'm, this one was, is going to be hidden anyway, because if you turn the, the cameras in the mirror, I'm probably in this one too. This was the last one I shot that day. See, look, I, that, see, that's, yeah, this where's, was done. Where's the mirror? Ah, look at that. There's the it's mirror. It's the whole wall. Okay. Yeah, this was the last one of the day. And I just wanted to make sure I had enough scans done to where um, I had both the, in, I had some interior areas to where Ma Matterport could merge two models together for me. And again, my point in doing this was that I would, I wanted to create something that wasn't a construction site it wasn't a um, outside scan of a strip mall done for architectural purposes. It was a um, multifamily apartment communities, luxury pool. This was a marketing piece. We're marketing like this is how great the pool is and all that. This is a use case of the BLK that I have not seen myself. And I wanted to create it, make it do the best job I could of it. And then tell people, hey, use this, pitch this. See what happens when you approach hotels, other multifamily, and other um, places that could benefit with an outside scan to show somewhat of a luxury um, resort style vibe. Well, I, you know, for me, looking at it as a marketer, mm -hmm. uh, um, I would say, oh, well, that's great that you were able to, to, to scan in daylight, but this looks like the building is, is under construction or is, bur is burnt down. So in this particular case, Chris, I, I would say I would definitely disable the, the dollhouse, dollhouse views, view, which is now yeah. possible. Um, uh, and then second, I, I would use uh, Metroplex 360 uh, cool tool that would enable the, um, the, the mini map up here in order to do the walk around. Yeah. And so I think that's the trade off is to say, look, Matterport is not designed as an outdoor medium. Uh, the, let's say the Matterport camera mm -hmm. scanner, um, but using a BLK, you, you could easily scan outdoors. Um, but you really need to turn the dollhouse view off because it will it will drive uh, the architect, the designer, the marketing person. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, you haven't shown this to your client yet, have you? Yeah, they love it. But the, but the, the, how about dollhouse view? What did they say? I told them that this was a field test and yeah. that I'm not done. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to try to do the best job I can to complete the mesh. Because I'm not satisfied with the mesh at that point. Dan, that took me three hours with the BLK. 
at the quality settings that I believe were the lowest that you can do yeah. to get a good result. So, and what what were those set? on the HDR side? What was it? I did HDR two. You two can go of, one, two, three, four. So you did level two. Yeah, level two. I keep no. Forgetting. I'm sorry. There's three levels. Yes. Uh, I think there's four. Four. Let me. I'm so sorry. I I wish that I. I Why don't you look I, for that for a moment? I'm just going to let everybody know if, if you're if you're just tuning in, you're watching ahead. WGAN TV live at five. Our guest today, Chris Hickman, he is the uh, founder, developer, uh, rock star, Metroplex 360. Uh, anyone who's in the We Get Around Network forum, you immediately get it that 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 Chris is uh, is so giving of his time. He takes the time. He he answers questions um, and. Uh, and he takes a lot of time to answer questions in depth that I think is very helpful for all of us, including me. And uh, and we do have uh, a, Leon. I know you're in, in our uh, uh, our virtual studio audience, our green room, I suppose. Um, we'll we'll bring you in for some questions. I think we'll we'll wrap up with Chris here in a moment and bring you in. So um, uh, if you're just finishing dinner um, late, um, uh, make sure you got a nice clean shirt on because we're going to put you on camera here in a second, Leon. Um, so, uh, Chris, did you have a chance to look that up? How many yes. levels? Yes, I did. Um, it's setting is uh, HDR off or two to five. Huh. You and didn't get a chance to test. Well, you, you tested three? With I tested four. Four. And two. Four. And, and, two. and But you also did on medium. Was it medium or high mesh? Yes. That, that was the one on the other one where it took almost 12 minutes to find out it crashed. Yeah. Both of those settings independently will increase or decrease the amount of time per scan. And there were a couple rough spots when I started up. It might have been it was windy on that first scan. It might have been the fact that like it seemed like my iPad turned off. It went to sleep or something while I was scanning because it capture desynced after like 12 minutes of just sitting there waiting for the scan to come through. Um, so I settled on, I, I have compared both and Dan, you can look at it later or you can show it on the show if you want. But on that first scan, I did several scans at HDR four and medium and then several at HDR two and medium one through five here are HDR two or HDR four. I'm sorry. And then the final two that I did were HDR2. And Dan, I really can't tell a difference between them. I can't say, well, yeah, you know, I shot, eight, that, of course, it's not as good because it's not HDR4. It looks the same. Yeah. I, you know, so, I, uh, Chris, I'm going to give you my takeaway so far. And then ma maybe you can tell me if I'm missing something. Sure. One, BLK360, the black 360, as you call it, enables outdoor scanning with uh, and, and 360 photography without any thought uh, of worrying about the sun. Yeah. So, th so that's a huge plus. And we're looking at the photography. You might as well think, oh, well, that's just Matterport. Well, yeah. it, it was shot with a different camera than Matterport. So, mm -hmm. uh, totally seamless with with with, uh, with Matterport in terms of the the photography. So, yeah. number one, ability to shoot outdoors. The second thing I heard is that you could literally put the scanner thirty feet away, yeah, and yeah. have successful scans. Yeah, now, it beautifully. I would imagine you're doing that if you have a super large space and it's mm -hmm. just not necessary to uh, walk every six to 10 feet, 10 feet, 12 feet with a Matterport camera. So uh, so the second thing is you be put the cam put the camera scanner, the, the black 360, you could do it further apart. Mm -hmm. uh, th three, which I don't think we can fully appreciate um, looking at uh, the samples we're looking at, but it's going to create a denser mesh. And, yes. and and that has meaning to, in the AEC world, um, architects, engineers constr uh, in the construction space where uh, the mesh matters. Um, I know all of us in the We Get Around Network forum were caught up on the photography because that's the only thing that ever mattered to us. And this object file thing that the camera creates, we've always just thought about it. That is, what's, what's the word in the ocean? detritus, detritus, flotsam or something. It's just, it's like, it's a I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> it, it, the, 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 the data is a, is a it, it produces this object file that has no use. Well, that's not sure. the case at all. It's, it's frankly, the 
the data is is way more value in my opinion the data is way more valuable than the photography and we're just scratching the surface of, of what Matterport is actually capable of doing when you start talking about words like artificial intelligence and machine learning and chatbots yes. and all kinds of you know stuff we've only seen a little chatbots. you know we've only seen a little bit of that machine learning stuff like seeing yeah. videos created automatically of a space. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny though, so much can be done with photogrammetry and with with, uh, with recognition in photos too. So, I mean, I'm still I'm still the champion of the raster photographic images where I'm, I don't really get programming in 3D, Dan. That's the funny thing. Like I don't yeah. get how the whole thing works, but even with the BLK, black, yes, I said it the way they do. Even the BLK, <laughs> you combine that with capture and you don't need to, you can use this device and not have to have an understanding of the architectural world at all. You can be someone with, you know how to use a Matterport, guess what? Then you know how to use this device too, because so, with this capture, they work the same. That So that's my third takeaway. The first, the, the first was outdoors. The second was the distance between scans. Uh, the, the, the third is, uh, I think we all just had a, a refreshing, <gasps> Ah, it works the same way. If I know how to scan with Matterport, I know how to scan with the BLK 360. Yeah. There's really no learning curve. Probably want to do at least one test to maybe see mm -hmm. maybe what the difference is. If you can do the permutations of perhaps nine or 12 different settings on HDR and on point cloud, maybe. Uh, that's a very tedious thing to do. Just because of how long these take yeah. to do. So, you know, I, I think we need to challenge Matterport to say, hey, you know, folks at Matterport, you know, don't, don't ask us to do that. Would you please create one model? In fact, engage Metroplex 360, spend some bucks with them, some really big bucks with them, and have him create a, 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 a model where he labels each permutation of uh, the quality of the photography and the quality of the mesh, and then make that data file available so that we could see, or for our clients to say, okay, which level do you need of the of the mesh? Do you, oh, yeah. do you need super great, or is this level okay? Because based on capturing scanning from three minutes to fifteen minutes, I'm going to charge you differently, right? Yeah, well, right. I so, would I'd be happy to do that. I'd be happy to go out there and to meticulously, you know, put a little, put a quarter on the ground or something and move the tripod to the same place, go around, do the scan in all nine settings. I mean, Dan, I got a lot going on in my life, but yeah, I love this stuff. I know, but you're, Chris, you're also the perfect person to do that because you, you are, you are a coder, a programmer. And so you have this methodical thinking you know, where it drive me nuts to do a project like that. I, I couldn't possibly it's deal fun. with that. Or you would look at that project and go, wow, this is so cool. I get to test every permutation of HDR setting and mesh creation in, 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 in order to, you know, label it all. It's then people can actually make decisions from that. So yeah. anyway, I started a new, a new uh, tag in the forum. It's called Dear Matterport. Uh, it was in inspired by uh, uh, one of our members that, that wrote a letter to Matterport uh, uh, yesterday about the, what do you call it? Uh, testing the, um, taking the, uh, doing a, a, a systems maintenance and, and, and did it during the, the heart of prime time for many of us that are using workshop at night after we've come home and couldn't use it. So I, I, I tagged, anyway, I tagged it Dear Matterport. So I, I think uh, in my in my spare time, I will create a post that says Dear Matterport, and we'll just, we'll do that. And we'll reference, you know, time code on this video about this discussion. Well, Dear Matterport, pay Chris to go scan the same thing nine times, because <laughs> I don't mind that at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Dear, uh, do, do you <laughs> want to write it? I'll t why don't you write it and then send it to me and I'll post it. How about that? I'll, I'll do we that. won't tell them that we won't tell them that we won't tell them that you wrote that. You'll ju <laughs> I'll just post it as my brilliant idea of, of uh, engage Metroplex 360 Chris Hickman to shoot the same identical space uh, in whatever number of permutations it is so we can see the difference of the photography and uh, in the in the mesh. Anyway, so those were my take my takeaways so far. Um, that third one was ease of use. Um, that I think that's what today's yeah. show actually 
is the breath of fresh air for, for all of us is to, to say, this is possible. Renting a camera is possible. And, and, and you're, you're not going to have, a, if you're a Matterport service provider, you have no learning curve. This is, yeah. it just, it's just another little device to hook up to Wi-Fi in the same process. Is that, does that sound right? Yeah. And Dan, there's a couple things I wanted to share and I don't know if I really want to go into deep discussion on them, but I feel as if by not mentioning them, it would be disingenuous of this chat. Okay. I wanted to mention that the BLK 360 can be operated without an iPad if you weren't using Capture. There's a button on it you hit and it will store everything internally. That's cool. Number two. When well, you how, how do I do that? I'm in the picture. I don't want to, I don't want to, I actually haven't done it myself. I know this is a feature. Okay. Pretty much there's one button on there. It's my understanding that you can actually do different uh, touches at this. It will do the scan without an iPad on site. Okay. That's uh, to use with their own software, which I, I won't go into because I'm not a yeah. pro at using that stuff. I, yeah. So so Leica actually has its own platform and own software. Yeah. But I, I think for the for the purpose of our audience, for the, we get around network forum members, for, um, we're really talking about uh, hey, I'm already doing Matterport, but I, I haven't been able to go outside. Right. Um, I, I got super large space and, and I, I, it takes too many scans to, to, to... Or it doesn't work. Or it doesn't work. Yeah, I uh, wouldn't, that space I did that you saw, we would it, the camera would just say, no, I'm in the sun. I don't know where I am. There's nothing for me to detect. I can't do this. But there is, Dan, there is a point I wanted to make, though. Yes, you can operate it with a button. But while you're scanning these scans while using Capture, the point cloud information for each black scan, BLK scan that you do is also stored on the device. So while I'm making a Matterport scan, I can then, I don't need to buy a matter pack of my BLK stuff. It simultaneously will be available to download off the device. And that's kind of cool. So Dan, for me, I don't plan on doing anything with point clouds. I'm not that kind of a user. But what I would like to do is when I get the scan done, I'd like to take that data off the camera and make that available for people to look at because I'd like for people to use this as a sample of this is what it would look like if they were to do it. So it, that's a cool power feature to realize you don't need to buy Matterpack um, in order to get point cloud stuff from your Matterport plus black scan. Okay. Cool. And then I have, a, I have one more point that right. was brought to me by another field test user. They stated to me that to Matterport's credit, downloading the data directly from the BLK, it's a very messy point cloud and you need to have a lot of expertise in order to tame that and to be able to make it usable. Conversely, downloading the Matterpack that has a combination of data from both Matterport and the BLK it's amazing how clean and usable it is and the job that Matterport's pipeline has done on it. And that's kind of an exciting thing. Cool. I know I just saved a lot of stuff and I just kind of we'll, want to we'll, say we'll, that. We'll, we'll make that a fourth point because I, I think for, 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 for those to know that they can get the data directly, on the other hand, yes. if you're ordering it as a matter pack, um, not only do you get the, the, the point cloud, there's other stuff that you get in that, that yeah. pack as well. And that maybe it's not better delivered in a better way. And and, and, yeah. if, and again, if you have a paid client, uh, you're just going to build in the quest of the matter pack in, in your quote anyway. It's 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, in fact, let's, uh, let's, let's bring Leon in. Um, he's been so patient in, in our virtual Hi, studio audience. Where are you? He's coming. So there he is. Hey, Leon, we got, we, let's see if we can unmute you. Yep. Yes. Can we hear you, Leon? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah. So, uh, Leon, I'll never get your last name right, but let's try. Leon Von Slell. Yeah. <laughs> In the UK, uh, for, 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 for those that, uh, that, that are members of the We Get Around Network Forum, you'll recognize that, that Leon is often doing a deep dive. He seems to have the, the, the time to, to study uh, in great detail, his fascination, like the rest of us, um, with 360 photography, et cetera. And so, uh, Leon, I think you, you and I talked uh, last week at length on about Matterport BLK 360. Uh, now we've heard from, from Chris, who's actually used it. What kind of questions you got for Chris? Um, 
I'm not sure whether I have a lot of questions, but I've uh, got a few observations. Um, uh, I'm trying to understand because I'm I'm an engineer way back when, uh, but I'm trying to understand how does this work and what can be done because it's fascinating technology. Now, uh, in in terms now, now I've been looking around it some sort of standards as to tell you what the quality of a mesh is or what the quality of a point cloud is. And the closest I can come with is actually uh, in terms of the uh, uh, scanning, it is amount of points scanned per degree. Now, if you, if you have a, 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 a fairly dense uh, in terms of the type of equipment we're talking about here, uh, BLK360 and the NC Tech and uh, so things, and not the, the, the pharaohs of the world, but uh, you're looking at about uh, 100 points uh, or 50 points uh, uh, correction. Uh, yeah, uh, 50 points per degree. Now, uh, bear in mind, it's, uh, these are all the radial points that are going out. So the further you go out, the wider the points become. Now, if you want to go further away, you, you get a denser scan to give you. Uh, so at, say, 15 feet on low will give you the same as 45 feet on high. Uh, so the, the, the points in between uh, the space uh, will be the same. Now, um, I watched that, uh, Chris, and perhaps you could have a look at it. Is on, on Leica's web, under the tutorials, uh, I think it's uh, video 11, they do uh, uh, targets, uh, which I scan, which is basically a circular with a sort of a cross on it. And they, they look at it in the point cloud and they see how recognizable it is and which uh, they tested at different distances. Uh, uh, and the, the most effective distance is about 45 feet, both on uh, medium and high. Uh, uh, on, on 55 feet, uh, medium uh, doesn't recognize it and high doesn't sometimes recognize it. So uh, for practical purposes, 45 feet is your uh, uh, a furthest distance you can either scan on medium or high with a, uh, a Leica, which means this is where the real advantage of the uh, BLK360 comes in is the ability to scan on medium at uh, 45 feet intervals, which uh, it takes a little bit longer than a Matterport, but uh, if, you, if you scan at those distances, all of a sudden, yeah, you can uh, collect uh, point cloud data of huge spaces in a relatively short period of time. Now, uh, as, a, as a camera as such, I'm not particularly blown away by it. It's, uh, I think the Matterport is probably better uh, in most cases. Uh, Chris, I've looked at uh, a lot of stuff on the net and uh, I, I can really, I, I, I do a lot better sphericals with, uh, the, the, with a DSLR uh, than this can do. Uh, so uh, if, if, if you're gonna use it for, uh, for the photo side only, uh, I wouldn't use it. I think it's way too expensive uh, piece of kit for that. But if you're gonna capture uh, data, now it's a, it's, a, it's a very specific tool uh, for a specific job, it's not uh, it's not good at everything. But if you uh, uh, if you inside with uh, uh, lots of rep uh, repetitive spaces, you you know the big spaces inside. This is the perfect tool for that job. For outside, it's it's perfect. If you want to capture um, uh, any data which you have to measure or or, or, or have a, a better view, it's a perfect tool uh, for that. Um, would I buy it? I would love to have it, but I don't want to pay the money for it. <laughs> oh, Chris, Christmas is coming up. You know, hey, hey, Chris. I think the great thing about Leon is uh, he 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 does such in depth study, like 
like we think we do a little bit of research and we're like we have some knowledge you know he's watched every video that that on like his website he's read all the, the the specs so he just simplified it for us by saying shoot on medium uh don't go more than 45 feet and you'll have good data and your photography will be fine so i i think he just unsold that matterport project that we were gonna we were gonna try and have oh, matterport yeah. engage you to yeah. shoot nine or 12 different things uh -oh. at the same but, time uh, uh but but we all know as as soon as the spaces open up you don't want to shoot every two meters or or, 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 or or because it's it's a pain in the butt but if you can now uh, all of a sudden uh, shoot every 45 um sorry i mixed my meters and my feet up here if you can shoot every 45 feet you can <laughs> you can make a lot of distance in a day mm -hmm. uh uh you can you can you can, uh, i was reading some on, on one of the uh, posts somebody wanted to scan uh, a huge space with a matterport and i thought don't you know you're going to kill yourself if you want to do that every uh, 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 six feet or eight feet. Uh, uh, I, I love this technology. It's just at the moment because I, I don't think there's a, a, a big enough market for it. But as the market develops, uh, the rental prices will come down. Here in the UK, uh, they only rent it per week, and it's eight hundred pounds a week, which is about twelve hundred dollars a week. Uh, you can you can get it out of Germany uh for 99 euros a day but there's a day shipping and a day return so if you want to shoot a day uh, uh you're gonna pay for three <laughs> unless you want to uh shoot it, pick it up or you can maybe pick it up if you have to be lucky enough to be by the the shop that's renting it right yeah no but that's in germany from me so, so right right so if they're gonna ship it in a day i'm i'm gonna get it the next day so i'm gonna to shoot a day, I'll, I'll probably, yeah. and I have to return it. So the only well, count it's returned uh, back uh, to the let, shop. Um, let me kind of just tease a, a, one of the WGAN TV uh, Live at Five shows coming up, because we, we actually are going to have um, a BLK360 product manager of emerging technologies um, uh, for a company called Multivista. And he is also the technologist for Leica Geo System. So he is really the subject matter expert on, on BLK. And I, I mentioned two companies there. I'm getting ahead of myself, Multivista and Leica. Both are owned by Hexagon. So I, I think the, the good news, Leon, uh, you're going to be in your element. I hope you can join us on that show. That's uh, uh, Friday, uh, April 27th, uh, WGAN TV Live at 5. Uh, again, the, the literally the internal Leica Geosystems uh, technologist, and I, I I think you'll have met your your match of being able to ask those questions about how 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 far is the scanning data, and at what setting is that really optimized for? So you know so you can kind of move efficiently through the space. Uh, with how I think what it probably is is the intersection of uh, I think about f-stop shutter speed and ISO because with those three things you can you can do so many different things but you, you kind of have to say well yeah you know you typically for this kind of shoot you want to have these three settings so I think we need to ask the the Leica expert uh, okay so you know give us three scenarios of kinds of spaces you would shoot what's the default setting that you would shoot it at for the photography and for the data capture and how many feet between scans are you doing? Does that sound like a, like a, that kind of question to ask him? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, it is not an exact science. I think, and, and, I, and I think, uh, that we will build a pool of experience as we, uh, discover this, because I think each, uh, uh, uh scenario in, in terms of what you want to shoot uh, if your client wants uh, more complexity and, and more finer detail in his uh, 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 for example if you shoot a mine or you shoot an industrial plant and uh, they and they don't have uh, all the capture data and they want to see which pipe goes where obviously you will uh, uh, your pitch will be much uh, smaller than 45 yeah. feet uh, so it's all going well, to depend on uh, what your client, uh, what the outcome is uh, required. Uh, are you going well, to shoot? Well, again, just to follow up on that, because when we do have that subject matter expert from Leica Geosystems, 
specifically on the BL BLK360, um, uh, we are also going to be talking about it in context to the AEC space, AEC space uh, with um, a representative from MultiVista, which is a company that specializes in uh, the AEC space of, of, of capturing spaces. So um, I, I think part of, you know, Chris, you use the camera, you, you use the Leica BLK360 to, to scan and do photography, but I, I think you probably used it in a, in a use that is not necessarily the sweet spot of when you would use the camera. I mean, you know, yes, you could shoot around the pool, but, uh, you know, I wonder how much your client would really want to pay for something like that, where they might say, well, in, you know, in, instead of what you would need to charge me on that shoot, why don't you just take two beauty shots with a DSLR camera at two ends of the pool? And Oh, pull. you'd be surprised. They've really? been asking me for the longest time, hey, you shot the inside of our clubhouse. Why can't you make it go to the pool? And really? I three, yeah, I put a 360 view in the pool. And they're like, why can't we walk around? Because wow. these are high, these are high-end properties. Exciting. These are luxury properties, all the interiors, they're the newest greatest. I mean, Dan, one of the reasons I love shooting that place so much is there's an all you can drink Starbucks coffee bar and Tazo chai tea latte is right on the inside there. This isn't, this is, this is the high end apartments. And for them, it's worth the investment. They can have a wow feature on their website. Okay. And they can tell people about it. That's a worthwhile investment. All right. I stand corrected. Uh, that's great. Oh, you have yeah. a, yeah, you have a tool that can accomplish this. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, Chris or Leon, uh, any other takeaways from today's show? Uh, again, just to quickly summarize, shoot outdoors in bright sunlight, be able to scan, uh, let's call it 45 feet apart um, and be successful uh, scanning. Uh, super easy to use if you're a Matterport service provider. It, it, it literally mirrors, the, it's just another device you hook up to your iPad and you're in like Flint. Um, I think we talked about our prediction that uh, in time for SPAR 3D uh, Expo and Conference, uh, June, I believe, 3rd through 5th, something like that. Let me just check that. Uh, that it's, it's likely that Matterport will exit the, uh, the, the beta testing. Uh, just checking the date, uh, looking in the We Get Around Network forum. So I hate to give out a wrong date. Um, uh, Okay, uh, SPAR 3D Expo and Conference, June 5 through 7 at the Anaheim Convention Center. I'll, I'll be there. I'm going to be covering it for WGAN-TV. We'll do live reports. We'll, we'll file some video. Um, we'll write about it in the blog, in the, in the forum. But I, I fully expect Matterport's going to be there, and Leica BLK is going to be there, and Hexagon's going to be there, and Multivista is going to be there. And, there and, and the announcement that we will hear is that, that you, you can now go buy and do this. It's out of beta. Uh, totally predict that. Chris, any other takeaways from, from, from scanning with the BLK the last uh, week or so? Yeah, I'm going to post some videos on We Get Around. I've shared them with some people already, and I'm going to kind of edit them. And it'll show more hands-on what it's like when the camera rotates, what it's like in the field to avoid getting shot in the camera, okay. um, kind of making people feel more at home. Because I really do believe that, especially with renting this for about 250 a day, there are some use cases. Let's say it's a high-end hotel, Dan. Let's say it's a high-end hotel. They've got a marketing budget. It's actually not cost prohibitive at all if you can create a successful scan. And I believe that we're just seeing the beginnings of this. The stuff you saw with the missing stuff, the missing holes, well, if Matterport think it's valuable to let us fill in a pool, we'll fill in the pool. It's going to come. We'll just, we'll keep pushing for it. I think people will pay for it. And the question is, who are these people and how can we serve them? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, uh, Leon, anything else? Uh, I think uh, we're at the cusp of a market that we don't quite yet understand. Uh, 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 and I think uh, uh, this type of technology uh, uh, is going to be a huge disruption uh, coming into the future. Uh, 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 at the moment, uh, so much time is spent on capturing uh, data and so many people uh, are involved in capturing data and uh, it, it is not usable across uh, b b b huge distances, uh, lots of people interactive. This uh, just opens up a, a, a previously 
uh, it was only the most uh, the biggest jobs that could afford uh, to have uh, laser scanning. This then democratize uh, laser scanning in a huge way. And I think uh, this will open the, uh, the gates for the technology to de even develop further. There'll be new players in the market in the future. You'll see something coming out of China probably in the next year or two. Uh, <laughs> and, and so forth and so forth. So yeah, I think it's uh, exciting times. I think, uh, and if I can give anybody any advice, nobody has written the book yet about what this is all about. And, uh, and, and, and we guys that are experimenting with it and trying to learn, and, and there's uh, a lot of different disciplines uh, that is involved in it. And, and, and you get the uh, VR geeks that talk languages that I haven't got a clue about, but I'm learning myself. I'm teaching myself on YouTube and you find most of the information uh, guys ex also experimenting on YouTube and uh, figuring things out. And uh, yes, it's exciting times. I, I yeah, I want to pick up on that. Leon, first, I want to ask you, when you do see those videos and you see something that's just a, a gem, pu publish it in the forum. Just start a new discussion that we get around Network Forum and say, hey, saw this video. Um, it, it's really important to take a look at it either on a camera platform, a service provider. You're doing so much research uh, uh, when you find something. Please do share it. I want to pick up on your word democratization. This is something that I've written about quite a bit in the, and this I'll just kind of summarize and we'll, we'll call it a day. We'll, Chris, we'll get you back to your, your, your five kids that are just waiting for dad there. Um, uh, this is something I've, I've written about extensively in the forum. And, and the, I want to say that the, the intersection, the union of Leica BLK 360 and Matterport is a, a seminal moment in the history of Matterport. And then when we look back 10 years uh, about what were the key milestones in the ecosystem of Matterport, we're going to look to the day that Matterport announced a strategic alliance, a partnership with Hexagon uh, related to this Leica BLK360. We'll look to uh, this week in, in, in terms of this, this uh, beta testing uh, public beta testing, and then probably the that the really the marker will be it's probably at Spar 3D when it's announced that 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 uh, it's now out of public beta, and what I what I believe is significant is actually not so much that it's BLK and Matterport, it's that Matterport has now done a, a camera alliance with another company. You know, if you think about when Matterport started, when, when I bought my camera in July, Matterport camera in July of 2014, Ma Matterport had to invent the camera, the app to run the camera, processing, hosting, content delivery, and then everything else. So it's kind of like in, uh, inventing the electricity and the light bulb at the same time. Uh, and, and so this is kind of like, ha, ah, We've invented the light bulb and electricity. We can get out of the light bulb business. There'll be plenty of people making that. So I, I think what we'll see is on the high end side, this is my prediction, on the high end side, we'll see Matterport continue to do alliances with other scanning cameras that will work seamless, seamlessly with Matterport. I, I would imagine that they'll still be working to push the price of a Matterport count camera down at the lower end, it's my personal opinion in terms of development. But I, I just feel this is a seminal moment because there will be more camera and scanners that will enter the ecosystem that will enable all of us as whatever it is that you call us, visual storytellers, to have tools that we've never even imagined to accomplish jobs that we never thought were possible and that's when that democratization starts to take place of and the, the world will be uh you know perhaps in google's vision the entire world of outdoor spaces will be mapped and the entire world of indoor spaces that are not private will be mapped and when all this photography has all this underlying data and, and Chris, you started to talk about photogrammetry and there's this process of videogrammetry and then there's this the point clouds and the data and machine learning and artificial intelligence. They're, exciting times are ahead. We're just going to see a whole fleet of drones in a couple of years fly over everything, get the map done, and we're just going to be like, oh, they don't need us anymore. 
No, we we need to be able to push the button that starts the drone starts that the flies drone. through the house. In, in fact, we've actually had those. Con- you know, if if you're if you're if you're watching uh, WGAN TV <laughs> on on YouTube, come join us in the We Get Around Network forum because we actually do have these kinds of discussions about you know mashing up Matterport with a trolley, mashing up Matterport with a um, a drone, uh, mashing up other technologies and flying through the house. And uh, I think all the conversations end, and but somebody needs to press the button to start, start the automation. They need to show up. They need to own the equipment, and they need to be liable for it, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm a bit slap happy. It's Friday afternoon. Um, uh, 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 Chris, thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah. Good to see you, Dan. It's, it's always good to see you. Always good to visit with you. Thank you. Thank your family because I, I I know you got a lot going on. And uh, Leon, th- thank you always for for joining in, and you know even just being patient, sitting in our our green room there before we brought you on camera. Um, we we love that you do these deep dive uh, research into everything that we're just scratching the surface on. I hope you can make the show, uh, Chris. I hope you can make it as well when when we have the actual. Uh, I'd love to. Subject matter expert from BLK 360 because we need someone asking tough questions, especially about that tripod. Yeah, what's up with the tripod? <laughs> up? When when can I expect fast capture? And why does the photo part take so long to scan? Yeah, yeah. Keep right, writing all those yep. questions. We're and, 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 for that. Why is the accessory so terribly expensive? Why is the what? The accessory so that little connector. Uh, yeah. Be- between the BLK360 and a normal tripod is the price of a tripod. It is. It's it's a little dinky. It's a. I it's put the a, tripod it's, away. It's tiny. It's this little thing that uh, allows you to connect the two together. Sounds um, good to me. Capitalism yeah. at work. It's the version of this that <laughs> is not on this. Yeah, it's and a and tripod it's, adapter. And, yeah. And in the UK, it's over a hundred pounds. I know it's crazy, right? It's it's that price they can recoup their R and D, right? Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Anyway, Chris, thank you again. Leon, thank you again, and uh, thank you all for tuning in to WGAN TV live at five. We have been recording. Oh, in fact, we haven't done we haven't done a selfie. Everybody, kind of go with your thumbs up. This will be a little. A th- I got to see your fingers. Don't block your face. Uh, oh, look at that, Leon. Hands up a little bit higher, Leon. Hands up higher, higher. Okay, look at the camera, five seconds. Maybe YouTube will catch that as the screen grab for the YouTube. Anyway, we've been recording today. Thank you. We've been recording today's show. So if you if you missed anything or you want to share this show with, with someone, uh, we will post it in the We Get Around Network forum.com. The shortcut is WGAN-TV.com. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Dan Smigrod. For for uh, for WGAN TV live at five. Thank you. Uh, just stopped on the recording and. Okay. Let me-